everybody, I'm Lonnie with Everything Nature and we have a couple of really exciting guests here with us today. So stick around, this is definitely one you're going to want to see. Today we are here with Renee and her friend Achila. And Achila is, as you might guess, a bird. Right? Right. <laughs> but she's a really, really amazing bird. She is a peregrine falcon. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Achila? Sure. Well, the word Achila means fire. And that really fits a peregrine falcon because they are very feisty. And I have had her for four years. I worked with her at a facility three years before that. So we've known each other seven years. That's a, that's a pretty good relationship. It is, a, and relationship is the key because uh, with a wild bird of prey like this, uh, they can be very dangerous. Um, she has really sharp talons and a sharp beak, and she has used them on me before. <laughs> so it's really a relationship of trust. It's not, she's not my pet, and she's not my buddy. And I don't cuddle up with her at night and say good night. Right. I don't kiss her good night because I like my face just the way it is now. You don't want scars all over. Right, her. right. I don't oh. want peregrine scars. She's an older bird now. She was born in '97, so she just wow. turned 18 in in April. Wow. So, um, and she's also um, yeah. could live 20 to 25 in captivity. Wow. So. Um, and in the wild, they can only. I mean, in the wild, usually their lifespan is more like in the 15 to 18 range. And she's already 18 because, of course, she has, you know, she has food brought to her. She doesn't have to fight other birds off. Right. And she gets good veterinary care. Right. Exactly. I'm sorry. 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 I'm Kind of like a cross between a goose and a seagull. Yes, and they sort of sound like a duck. Of course, they are called the duck hawk. And that's it's not because they eat ducks, which <laughs> they do. It's because they sound like a duck. That's right. Could be. <laughs> and that's interesting because what you just said, they can also bring down a goose. Really? And yes, because of the way that they hunt in their stoop. You know, they go five miles above the animal, and then they come down. So they can take down a bird much larger than wow. themselves because the impact, they turn their, their feet like that, and then they hit them. Yeah. And so if that impact doesn't kill them, they also have notches in their beak, which you might not be able to see since she just got her beak trimmed. But it's called, a, it's called a tomial, it's called a tomial tooth, and they can sever their spinal cord. So they can take down ducks, they can take down a grouse, they can take down yeah. a goose. So if a three pound, 200 mile an hour projectile with yes. nails on the end doesn't kill the goose or duck yes, or pigeon funny. or whatever it is, then her, her little death tooth will yes. probably get the job yes, done. Yes, that would seal the deal, <laughs> I think, too. So some of the other features that she has to help her, you know, with that, you know, 200 plus mile an hour dive is she's got these cool little uh, cones in her nose and those just kind of help break up the, the surface tension sort of so that oxygen and air can still get pulled into her, her, her lungs basically. Um, just like uh, airplanes. Airplanes, they've developed the you know technology to put those cones on the air intake on airplanes because they were having the same problem and uh, you know and they actually studied the peregrine falcon exactly. and that's how they learned about they're called baffles and that's how they learned baffles. about it that's the name. so peregrine falcons even though at one time they were considered endangered uh, they're actually doing much better now but they are one of the most widely spread birds in the entire world you can find peregrine falcons on every single continent except Antarctica because that's the realm of penguins. They are the most widely spread raptor, bird of prey, and I believe the only bird more widespread than them is a pigeon, which consequently is one of their favorite foods also. And they don't really build nests like a lot of birds do, even a lot no. of birds of prey build nests or use other birds' nests. Because they like like uh, cliffs and stuff. They don't yes. build their nests in trees like an yes. eagle or a you know, hawk might. Right. They like Pre-made structures. Yes, pre-made structures. Whether it's a cliff or a yes. city. That's why urban 
the yeah. urban population is really growing because the top of a skyscraper is perfect for them. Yeah. They're way up high. The yes. predators can't reach them, and they have all the pigeons they can That's ever right, want. all the <laughs> pigeons they can eat. And then the eggs are actually more blunt on one side and more in a point on the other, right. so that they won't roll off the cliff. Because most birds would need a you know a nest made of sticks to keep their eggs in. Right. But exactly. their eggs are kind of shaped so that they can't roll off the eggs. Exactly. Well, I hope you all really enjoyed meeting our lovely friend Achila. Uh, I want to say thank you so much, Renee, for letting us come and You're welcome. spend some time with you guys and, and get to meet this amazing bird up close and personal. Yes. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> it Bye. was awesome. If you love learning about cool nature things, you should like this video. You can subscribe to us on YouTube and you can even check us out on Facebook. Thank you very much. What if I stand like a little behind her? Is that behind better? Her. That's worse. <laughs> I don't think I want to go through that part yet. Um, okay, so we'll talk a little bit about it.